As the temperature is starting to warm up, that's the prime season for Bermuda grass to begin growing again, which means more mowing and more weeding in our garden. I wanted to revisit our uh, research that we're doing out here at the Cimarron Valley Research Station in Perkins on our Bermuda grass eradication. And we call it eradication, but we kind of don't anticipate eradicating Bermuda grass because we know it's here to stay. But we wanted to look at starting to kill our Bermuda grass in these plots. Of our 30 different treatments, today I wanted to take a look at the chemical treatments that we've applied on a few of them. Um, of the 30 treatments, 13 of them consisted of different sprays that we've applied. Now, uh, looking across here, you can see the different variations that we've got on the burn down and the kill of the Bermuda grass. And of course, as you might expect, um, this one right here is a 41% glyphosate uh, treatment, which tend to give us good results. Um, glyphosate is one of the main products that is often used to kill Bermuda grass right now. Next to us, we also have another product that we used, and this is a 18% a glyphosate with diaquat mix. So again, you can see that there's been a pretty good uh, burn down kill. Now the thing we do know about glyphosate is that it does tend to translocate a little bit into those rhizomes. So we expect for it to kill some of those rhizomes that are underground. Basically rhizomes are underground stem tissue. Now as we look across here again you can see that there were some other variations. Some that kind of uh, uh, did some damage to the Bermuda grass and some that didn't do anything. Um, in fact it seemed to almost make them greener in some situations but there's one other treatment um, that I want to bring to your attention and this is a product called Torched. It's Torched Weed Killer. Now this is an all-natural product and so you'll see on this bottle that it's got a disclaimer on here that it is not a registered EPA uh, herbicide. So um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one of the things that um, allows it to have this exemption of 25B is that it has very low risk ingredients. This product has ingredients such as cinnamon oil and thyme oil and some other oils in it and also some soaps and salts that kill the vegetation. What we don't know um, is the efficacy of this product because a product that doesn't have to have an EPA registration doesn't have to prove um, in, with any data or any research of the effectiveness of its product. And so a lot of times when you have these all natural products, it tends to be testimonials and things like that. So the thing about this, again, is it did do a good job burning down. Some of the other sprays that we use also have oils in them and soaps in them, and we didn't see the same results that we did with this torch. Now the thing we're gonna be watching with this is to see how much those rhizomes recover because um, I don't know that it really translocates into the rhizomes like we know of with glyphosate. Now with any of these products, we do expect those rhizomes to push out new growth, even with the glyphosate. Um, and that's why it sometimes takes multiple applications. Rhizomes are almost like uh, battery packs that are underground for those plants. When they lose their vegetative growth um, and they can no longer photosynthesize, those rhizomes are underground. And depending on how strong of a stand of Bermuda grass um, kind of means how strong of a stand of rhizomes you have underneath there that will be able to recharge that vegetative growth above ground again. So you can see we have a little bit of Bermuda grass still here. Um, so we know it's here. Um, and we know we'll probably have to retreat these areas once again. Um, it's also in the glyphosate areas as well. And so that'll be something that we're watching for as this uh, research continues. Another thing I wanted to add is that all of these spray treatments have had three applications. And so most recently, the third application happened about two and a half weeks ago. So that's what we're seeing the results of is three applications and most recently two and a half weeks ago. As you look across these sprayed plots, you can also see there's some additional plots that have dieback, and those are replications of these same three treatments. 
And the other thing that you should know about um, this area where we're testing is it's a mixed uh, weedy patch. So we've got some broadleaf weeds, some grassy weeds, and also Bermuda grass in here. And so the rhizome reserves are probably a little bit weaker than what you might find in a solid stand of Bermuda grass that you might find in a common lawn uh, that is just Bermuda grass. So basically what we're trying to do here is exhaust those reserves that are in the rhizomes before we know we really have killed the Bermuda grass in these plots. And so conditions might vary depending on your stand of Bermuda grass that you have in your location. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.